my sense is the second half would be much better for developing markets as compared to developed markets, uh, partly on three counts. One, as I said earlier, uh, emerging markets could be closer to the end of their monetary tightening cycle by the second half of this year, which will lay a positive backdrop. Uh, developed market growth is likely to pick up in the first two quarters of this year, which implies that the export beta, if it comes through, will support emerging market growth. Uh, the third is you're seeing adjustments from the emerging market side and the bottom up side as well, with companies you know not expanding as aggressively as they were, uh, realizing the new normal for growth. And all three combinations, given the fact that the currencies in the EM world have also weakened, uh, like going into last year, 2013, the currencies were looking fairly overvalued when you look at the real exchange uh, rates, you know, for most of the emerging markets. Uh, they have connected quite a fair bit. So that should provide an additional tailwind to emerging markets. So my sense is you could see a reversal of some of these flows into the second half of this year towards emerging if it gets cheaper. Well, China is clearly pursuing two objectives. One is that they are following a much tighter monetary policy regime than a lot of other markets in the world because they have this big problem about too much of debt being accumulated there. So Chinese monetary conditions are going to remain fairly tight according to us. Uh, the implication for that is that domestic demand conditions in China will soften, will remain soften. They're also kind of on this path to fighting corruption, to kind of curtailing excess spending by government officials. And that also leads to a situation where domestic demand is going to remain a little weak, you know. So clearly the Chinese growth integer to my mind is going to go down to what extent it goes down from about seven and a half percent we think it probably goes down to seven quarters seven not below that that should still provide a robust enough you know growth outlook for economies which are directly related to china in terms of supplying goods into china uh, india is largely an importer from china so maybe you know domestic growth going down in china inflation coming off in china might actually help india because the import cost of the cost of imports into India will come down a bit. But uh, I mean, India's cycle, again, by and large, given the fact that it's essentially a domestic oriented economy will depend more on domestic factors than what happens in China. Well, uh, I would think the stance is still the same for India. Uh, last time, the reason why we were not kind of underweight uh, was because uh, the valuations look fairly cheap, you know. At this stage, valuations have run up and there's this big election-oriented uncertainty which is kind of looking at us. So my sense is uh, as things get clear after the elections in terms of uh, the policy statements of the new government, in terms of the interactions between uh, the various aspects of government policy, you probably look, uh, look at a positive stance. The, the good thing though between last time and this time is that uh, at a bottom level you're seeing some traction in terms of better earnings visibility, probably a, you know, a situation where the margin contraction which was evidenced for four to five quarters in a row is kind of ebbing now and you probably see some little bit of margin expansion as well. So still neutral but waiting for the right time I guess to, to increase allocations.